Aloha and welcome to our Word of Life radio program here in wonderful Okinawa, Japan. We give glory to the Lord of the harvest. There's a harvest blessing here for you tonight. Come on, join us. You all look so marvelous. Come on, smile. to be in a position of dominion and authority, especially over negative circumstances. God says, I, Jesus said to us, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. God's trying to build our lives up, a magnificent church. And you know, the church is not based on uh, our four walls. We love our facilities that we get to gather together in his name, knowing that he's here for us and with us, wanting to do miracle signs and wonders. Come on, let's thank God he's here with us today to do miracle signs and wonders. Oh, you can do better work. He's here to do miracles, signs, and wonders. He wants to do a supernatural work in our lives, especially when, it's, when it doesn't look possible. The Bible says God will make those things that are impossible possible. But we need to believe. We need to trust. We need to let him have his way. I love that Pastor Art was encouraging us last week that God is endeavoring to build a magnificent church. And the church, again, is not the four walls. We are the church. We're the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. As soon as we make a decision for Christ, we're snatched out of darkness, brought into God's marvelous light. We're the church. We're God's special handiwork. And he's wanting to do a magnificent work in our lives, not just in us as a corporate group, although as a whole corporate group of believers, as Word of Life family and the body of Christ, he's wanting to do a magnificent work in our lives as a church as a whole, but he's wanting to do a magnificent work in our individual lives, a magnificent work in our marriages, a magnificent work with our children. A magni he wants to do a magnificent work in the lives of our children and in our relationships relationship with them he's wanting to do a magnificent work that he shows up and shows out through us as soon as we show up on the job we're his ambassadors we're his representatives and he wants to show out through our lives to the glory of god jesus again said i will build my church individually and corporately and the gates of hell will not prevail against it dare to reign by the grace of god i love god's grace it's god's unmerited favor it's his willingness to work on our behalf grace is god's divine divine power which enables us to do the things we could never do on our own god's grace is his favor upon our lives god's grace is his willingness again to work on our behalf is that going up on the screens as yet Praise the Lord. Okay, it's coming. Grace cannot be earned. Grace must be accessed by faith. Grace is God's work for us. Grace is God's work in us. Grace is God's work through us. Grace is Jesus. Grace is Jesus. The Bible says in the beginning was the word John chapter 1. And the word was with us. The word was God and the word was with us. In verse 14 of John chapter 1, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is grace and grace is Jesus. Amen. When we obey God's word, we're cooperating with grace. See, the word is Jesus and Jesus is the word. When we're cooperating with this relationship that we've been given through Christ, the very moment we got born again, the grace of God came to live on the inside of us. God says, you're mine and I want to show out on your behalf. You're mine and I want to make a way for your life in every area of your life where there doesn't seem to be a possibility of any ways being made for you. You can't earn it. You just have to receive it. You just need to give your life to Jesus. You just need to surrender to him. And then he does a supernatural. But he wants to do a work in us, for us, and through us by his grace. When we trust more in his ability rather than our own, we are living by grace. Grace isn't earned. It's something that he gives us because he loves us unconditionally. 
We dare to reign in the grace of God. We dare to be bold. God's encouraging us, be bold and courageous to take dominion over the enemy because of this grace that I've placed upon your life. And if you'll give yourself to me and you'll, you'll lean into my grace, I'll take you where you've never been. I'll do in and through you what you never thought possible. But then I'll get all the glory because you didn't do it in your own ability. You did it by my grace. Can we give God praise for that today? Again, when we begin to obey God's word, we cooperate with grace. When we trust more in his ability rather than our own, we are living by grace. When we continue to do what God has told us to do in his word, when we do it, when we, when we come to church because he said, I want you to gather together, together in a corporate setting to be in my presence. We don't like argue with him. We go, yeah, I got to go there because grace is working in my life. Grace is drawing me in, and grace is being strengthened because I'm doing the word of God. I'm living by this grace. This, how many of us want favor? And favor isn't fair. Well, you know what? All we have to do is give our lives to Jesus and he gives us his grace of favor. I just want to have that supernatural ability where God does some supernatural things. It doesn't look possible, but he helps to make it possible. And it's miraculous and, it, and he gets all the glory. I just want to live a life like that. That's a life of grace. All we have to do is surrender to Jesus today and surrender to his grace today. And the supernatural will be working in our lives. People tell me uh, over the years, you know, we've been a church at 30 years. I've been married for 32. It's going to be 33 in April. Praise the Lord. And I, and I knew Pastor Art five years before we got married. And, and that's a whole other story. But I, <laughs> it, it, it was, it was an, an, an unusual story. God, God gets all the glory in the end. Praise the Lord. But how do we do what we do? How, how do I do what I do? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. And, and as fathers and as mothers and as husbands and as wives, as brothers and sisters, there's a grace on us to be that individual's husband or wife. I'm graced by God to be married to Art Sepulveda. And he's graced to be married to Kuna Sepulveda. We're graced by God to be the parents of our children and to be the grandparents of our grandchildren. We're graced by God to have the privilege to be the, the senior pastors of this great house, this magnificent church, because God calls every, every one of his sons and daughters magnificent. And when we build his house for his glory, he intends for it to be magnificent. But it's so because of his grace. It's because of his grace. When we continue to do what he says to do, we're living by grace. Tell your neighbor, come on, let's live by grace. Go with me, if you would, please, to Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. For if by the transgression of the one, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. The one man, Adam, said, I want to do what I'm going to do. My wife convinced me it's the right thing, and I did it. But he should have taken dominion over what she said because he knew better, but he gave in. Stand up for righteousness, men and women of God. Don't give in to compromise because what we, what we compromise to keep will eventually lose. Just a side note. So the one man, Adam, disobeyed. And he caused all of humanity after him to fall under the grip of the enemy. That death was the end result. But Jesus, say but Jesus. He came into the world, both son of God and son of man. And he, he, and he grew up as, 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 a, as a real individual, as a, as a human being, though he was also son of God, son of man. He understands where we're at in our life. He understands our makeup. And yet without sin. But he went to the cross for us over 2,000 years ago to the pay, to pay for the price of all of sin, of all of the sin of humanity. And that includes our sin. And when he went to the cross and his, his blood was poured out, that blood brought redemption or purchased us back into a right relationship with God, which is another word for righteousness. And that's why when the Bible says that we receive the abundance of grace and the gift the gift of right standing with God through this one Christ Jesus. We have an abundance of grace and this gift of right standing with God because of what Jesus has done for us. Grace is Jesus and Jesus is grace. The word is Jesus and the word is grace. 
Grace is the word of God, and the word of God is Jesus. Jesus is grace. The word of God is helping us to walk in this life of grace. So every time we come to church, grace is in motion. Every time we do what the word says to do concerning our tithes and and on our offerings, grace is moving in our lives. Grace is working on our behalf in Jesus name. Amen. We reign through God's abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And God is always going to be looking at our surrendered heart. Because we can't earn grace, but we need to give ourselves. We need to be surrendered to this amazing, awesome abundance of grace. Now, there are three basic principles that govern the operation of grace that I want to share with us today. Number one, grace cannot be earned. Say grace cannot be earned. I said it earlier, but it bears repeating. Grace cannot be earned. We can't work for this grace, this unmerited favor, this supernatural ability of God working on our behalf. We can't work for it. It's given to us because of God's unfailing, unconditional love. Romans eleven six says, but if, if it is by grace, his unmerited favor and righteous and graciousness, it is no longer conditioned on works or anything men have done. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. It would be meaningless. So we can't earn this grace. We have to just receive it. Tell your neighbor, come on, let's receive and walk in this grace. Now, I, I, come on, let's say let's receive and walk in this grace. Come on, tell somebody. I should hear a lot more sound. Yeah, okay, there we go. Just need to be encouraged. All right. So instead of placing our trust in our abilities or in our works family, we need to be putting our trust in what Jesus has already done for us. When we begin to trust God completely, our efforts, listen to this, when we begin to trust God completely, our efforts become corresponding action to our faith. When we begin to trust God completely, God wants us to be surrendered to him today and to be surrendered to this amazing grace to this abundance of his grace. Grace is only one channel. Second principle I want to share with you is that grace is only one channel that it flows through, and that channel is Jesus Christ. We can't have grace without Jesus. Yet when we have Jesus and we know that he's living in our heart and we've given our our lives to him, we can be assured we have the abundance of grace. John chapter 1, verses 16 and 17 says, And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, grace is Jesus. Jesus. Tell somebody else, Jesus is grace. So the very moment that we say, yes, God, I love you, I give my life to you, thank you. I give my life to you, I give myself to the grace of God. I give myself to your unmerited favor. I give myself to your ability to work on my behalf. We need grace to be husbands and wives. We need grace to be moms and dads. We need grace. We need God's grace to be who he needs us to be. Can somebody give me an amen? You know, on those days, you know, not more than a million years ago, I confronted a situation and I'm telling you, hallelujah. I was like, that wasn't right. What was said and was done, it challenged me and then it went into hurt. And when it goes to hurt, then you get mad. Now I'm mad. And then I'm like, sick them, God, just sick them. You know what they did. You know what they said. It was unjustified, the blood of Jesus. Oh, sick them. Holy Ghost, let your fire fall down on them. You know, because you're hurt and you're mad. And then, then the spirit of grace. Oh, the spirit of grace gets a hold of us. He got a hold of me. He said, come on, Kuna, you know what's right. Now, come on, you know you need to walk in love and forgive. It's not your feelings. You know it's not your feelings. You make a decision right now. There's a long pause, you know. But the grace is wooing you. The grace, the grace, the grace of God is undergirding you. The grace of God is embracing you. The grace of of God is saying, come on, I'll do it through you. I just need your willingness. You give yourself to me. Come on, Kuna. Give yourself to me. You do what my word says to you. You stand on the final authority of my word. And the corresponding action of your faith in my word will be supernatural. Just let me have my way. That's what the grace of God is wooing us to do. 
Yes, Lord, I forgive by faith. I love by faith. Hallelujah. And as I'm just pondering on God's goodness, and I'm pondering on his grace on my life, enabling me to be who he needs me to be. I have an encounter with God right there in my seat in the mid, in the middle of a public setting and nobody knows I'm crying. There might think something's going on and wrong with me, but I'm getting set free. It was wrong before the tears came, but the tears are good. They're washing me clean. The grace of God is embracing me and helping me to get into that right place in my attitude, in, in my, my perspective, and I get a breakthrough. And then the individual, they don't know what happened, you know, because they're in their own perspective, right? They didn't maybe even think they did anything wrong, like kind of like, like, and? But you don't get caught up in that. The grace of God embraces you. Amen? Grace has only one channel that it flows through, and that channel is Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. I said it earlier, and the Word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. Verse 14, if you could read it with me. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That, that She's putting verses, um, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. Yes. Amen. Verse 14. Jesus is grace, and grace is Jesus. So when Jesus gets a hold of us, when his word gets a hold of us, when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of us, grace is wooing us to set us up for the breakthrough that God has for us in Jesus' name. Now, a third principle that's important about how grace is governed. Again, number one, it cannot be earned. Number two, it has only one channel it flows through, and that channel is Jesus. And number three, faith is the only means for us to access grace. Faith. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. I stand by this grace. Come on, somebody. And I rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We have access by faith into this grace. We have access by faith into this grace. Faith is the key to live by and access God's grace, family. Thank you. Thank you, family. Thank you. Faith is the key to live by and access God's grace. Again, Romans 5, 2, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace. See, when I asked Jesus into my heart, I didn't see him come in or, or feel him come in. But I believed in my heart and I confessed out of my mouth that Jesus was the Lord and Savior of my life. And I got born again. I got snatched out of darkness, brought into God's marvelous light. And I was given the gift of righteousness. I was being made right with God because of what Jesus did for me. And at the same time, it, my faith was placed into God's hands, believing that he is Lord and Savior now of my life. And grace came in. Jesus came into my heart. Grace came into my heart. But it's accessed by faith. So we don't have to feel the, the grace we just need to know the grace of God is there for us if we'll give ourselves to it in Jesus' name. Faith is the key to live by and access God's grace. Faith is in our heart and it's in our mouth. We know this from Romans chapter 10 and verse 8. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Faith is in our heart and it's in our mouth. It's not based on feelings or circumstances. I don't have faith in God because of circumstances. I have faith in God because I live in accordance to his word. I see what his word has promised me. My expectation, my dependency, my trust is in his word of truth and what he's already done for me. The word is near us in our mouth and in our heart. Faith believes in our heart and faith speaks out of our mouth. Faith believes 
God's word to be true, and faith speaks God's word out of our mouth. The only way to access this grace, to tap into it when we need it, so that we're not just kind of oblivious to the grace, but we're deliberate about the grace of God. i got to tap into that grace when I'm ch- challenged with situations, when there are circumstances that look overwhelming. i got to tap into the grace of God by faith. Faith is believing in my heart the word of God. Faith is speaking out of my mouth what God says. So go with me now. Mark 11, 23 and 24. We're not going to see it up on the screen, but it's that whole understanding of faith. Faith speaks to the mountain based on the word of God. We don't doubt in our heart, but we believe that whatever we say will come to pass. Stop saying what we don't want, family. We're nullifying faith, grace. We're frustrating the grace of God when we speak contrary to the word of God. When we handle ourselves with our attitude contrary to the way we know we should. When we're not doing what we know we should. I'm not talking about when we don't know. I'm talking about when we do know and trying to act like we don't. Shall I repeat that? All right. You know, when we do know, but we're acting like we don't because we don't want to. Because it's not. Because like I said, with that whole little scenario, I didn't do anything wrong. Why should I have to be the one forgiving and loving? Why shouldn't they just get it right and grovel on the ground and say, forgive me? Well, you know what? They gotta, we all have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, saying, God, it's not about somebody else. I'm going to let you have your way in my life. I give them to you. I give that to you. We can't control everybody, but we can make decisions in our own lives. Amen. So we believe in our heart and we speak out of a mountain. We, we tell that mountain, whatever it is, whatever the mountain is. No, 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 no. You're not going to have the best of me. You're not going to have my family. You're not going to have my marriage. You're not going to have my finances. No, 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 no. This is what God says. And we believe that in our heart and we speak it out of our mouth. And as soon as we lock into that by faith, grace is in motion. That was our women's ministry a long time ago. But, I, you know, it's grace in motion for our lives all the time, not just for the women. And, and, and men, don't look at grace in a, in, a, in a weak way. Grace is strong. It sounds so, so beautiful, just the word grace, just the way it sounds is beautiful. And it just, you know, it, it's, just, it's just a glorious sound just to say grace. But there's strength in grace. But we have to access it by faith. It's got, we've got to be deliberate. Now it comes in our lives and it covers our lives the very moment we, we receive Jesus because he already paid the price for us so that we would have that grace. But we got to be deliberate about our lives in Jesus' name. Amen? Romans 4, 17. We call those things which be not as though they were until they're manifested. I'm talking about accessing grace by faith. We take God at his word and we begin to declare, By his stripes I was healed. I I am the healed of the Lord in Jesus' name. His word was sent for me to be delivered and healed of all destruction. Delivered, healed and delivered of all destruction. You are accessing the grace of God to flow in your life the very moment you declare what God says about us, about your situation. Are we getting this today? I love the grace of God. I love that we're being encouraged. Dare, be bold and courageous to take authority over the enemy in all negative circumstances by the grace of God. Not in our own strength, our own ability, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I do what I do. By the grace of God, I, 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 I allow myself to be that vessel, that one that God can not only work in, because I need him working in my life, for me, embracing me and undergirding me, but I want him to, to do a work through me as well. Amen? Because we're not an island to ourselves. You know, we, we're, not, we're not supposed to be loners where it's just all about us and no more, not even us four. It's talking about just me and... God and it's just me. Well, you know what? We live on this earth with other people. And God needs us to be his ambassador for the sake of others. We just have to get over ourselves and realize that as soon as we make a decision for Christ, he's graced us to be who he needs us to be. I said he graces us to be who he needs us to be. That's huge. Some of us think, oh, well, you know, I don't don't have the education, I don't have the finances, I don't have the family background. It's not about any of that because we could never earn this grace. We get it. We receive it because of what Jesus did for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Faith is how we live. Hebrews 10.38. Faith is the only way to please God. 
Hebrews 11, 6. Faith is the substance and gives evidence. Hebrews 11, 1. Now we can look up these verses of scripture. Hebrews 10, 38. The just shall live by faith once we come into Christ. We have to live by faith. But this faith that says your word is true. It's my final authority. This is the way I live. And then we're accessing the grace of God. Faith is the only way to please God. He says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he, he who comes to God, I'm reading from Hebrews 11.6. It's not up on the screen, but you can take it down in your notes. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He's wanting to reward us because of his grace. He withholds no good thing. Tap into the grace of God, family. Dare to reign in the grace of God. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. We know this from Hebrews 11, 1. And the evidence of things not seen. There's a substance to faith. We don't see it, but it's working. Faith always is in line. Faith comes, Romans 10, 17, from the word of God. That's why we've got to come to church. That's why we've got to go to the classes that we make available to all of us. That's why we've got life groups. You go into that environment with other people where you can hear the word of God and faith comes. And as soon as that faith comes, we're accessing the grace of God. We need to keep developing in our walk of faith so that we can keep developing and accessing the grace of God. They work together. Jesus is grace. Grace is Jesus. Jesus is the word. The word is grace. Every time we hear the word, we're hearing grace. Every time we're receiving the word, we're accessing the grace of God. We by faith lean in. We lean in by faith, not our feelings. We need God's favor. We want it. It's not fair. He just does amazing things. He's looking. His eyes are searching about the whole earth to find those hearts. It's always coming back to our hearts who are dedicated, consecrated, faithful, loyal, surrendered to him. And he says, this is 2 Chronicles 16, 9. He says, and I'll show myself strong on your behalf. That's the Old Testament. He was still trying to beckon people from their hearts to be right with him. Jesus came. And that's why we don't ask Jesus into our head. We need to renew our minds to the word of God, but we ask him into our heart because God's always looking at our heart. And if our heart is right, but our actions are wrong, God's grace is going to cover us. But if our heart is wrong and our actions are right, we're nullifying the grace of God. I said, if our actions are right, but our heart is wrong, we're frustrating the grace of God. We're, we're, we're saying grace. You're not good enough for me. I can do it myself. But if our heart is right and our actions are wrong, the grace of God will cover us. Can we give God praise for that today, family? There's hope. There's hope in the grace of God. Grace. Wonderful grace. Grace. Glorious grace. Amazing grace. Saving grace. Grace saved me that day from getting myself caught up in some things that I should never have gotten caught up with. Even when it doesn't seem like we are in the wrong, we'll get in the wrong when we know what to do and we don't do it. Let that sink because we all need to just lean into the grace of God by faith. Faith in God's word of grace gives us access to receive the benefits of grace. Faith in God's word of grace gives us access to receive the benefits of grace. Faith in God's word of grace gives us access to receive the benefits of grace. Now, we access grace by the faith of God. Faith has six eyes. Huh? Yeah. Number one, I believe. Number two, I will. It's an act of our will. God withholds no good thing. We've got to get our will in line with his will. I will. Number three, I take it. Number four, I have it. Number five, I thank you, almighty God. And number six, I forgive. Faith has six eyes. I believe I will to receive it. I will to give myself and be surrendered to the way God needs me to handle this. I take it by faith. I have it. I'm going to continue to have it and carry it. That I have says I carry it with me. I don't just take it and then let it. I, ha- I take it and I have it. 
I thank you for it. Remember the ten lepers that got healed? Only one came back to say, say thank you. And one translation of the Bible says that Jesus said, be continually made whole to the one that said thank you. That suggests that maybe the other nine might lose their healing. But the one that is thankful, thankful hearts, hearts of gratitude, is operating in grace. We're keeping ourselves connected with the plan of God and not letting the enemy have his way. Dare to reign by the grace of God. Be bold and courageous to take authority over circumstances and situations by the grace of God in Jesus' name. Amen? And I forgive because you see Mark 11, 23 and 24, that mountain moving faith and we're speaking to those situations Believing in our heart, not doubting, but that believing that what we say is going to come to pass. The Bible says, Mark 11, 23 and 24, we'll have whatever we say. We've got to watch what we're talking about. Say and declare what we want, not what we don't, what we don't want to have. But then verse 25 of Mark 11, 25, verse 25 of Mark 11, and it's not going to go up on the screen. I apologize. Maybe it'll get there for the next service. I just didn't tell them. So it's not their fault. I didn't, I didn't tell them. Thank you, Lexi, for all your help and TV crew. But it says, when you stand praying, wanting these mountains to be removed, when you're wanting answered prayer, forgive. The thing that's going to hinder our faith and going to nullify the grace of God from working in our lives is unforgiveness. Because it's contrary to God. God is grace. We've got to stay with God. Stay with forgiveness. Stay with God. Stay in the love of God. Stay with God. Keep our attitude of forgiveness. Keep our attitude of thanksgiving. Keep our, our attitude of grace. Amen? So I believe. I will. I take it. I have it. I thank you. I forgive. The six eyes of faith. By faith, again, Romans 5, 2 says we have access to this grace. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. How we stand by grace. Having an all to stand, stand therefore. Stand by grace. Not trying to earn it with the natural things that we're doing. See, we've got to just be willing to do what God says do. Ministry, to do the work of the ministry. And once we come into a relationship with Christ, he says, I want to equip you so that you can be my ambassador and do what I need you to do. I need to, to, I need your mouth to speak what I need you to say. I need you to go where I need you to go. I need you to be willing to do what I need you to do because lives are at stake. There are so many marriages are at stake. Families are at stake. People are dying at the, uh, by the dozens. They're, 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 they're at the, at the, at the very place of potential destruction. And your life, yielded to me with my grace, will pour through you. And that grace will bring deliverance. Snatch them out. Snatch them out of the grip of the enemy. See, when we give ourselves to Jesus, we want the benefits that he has for our lives. But a part of the benefit is the privilege to be used by him, for him to work through us. What a privilege. Amen. We have access into this grace by faith and by faith through this grace, we're able to stand. Come on, stand. Don't give up and don't let go. Say this, say by faith. faith. I believe I I will. I will. I I take, I have, I thank you, Lord, for your grace. And I forgive so that I don't nullify. I don't hinder my prayers from being answered. So that I don't set aside your grace for me. (laughs) Amen. Family, be strong in grace. Tell your neighbor, be strong in grace. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Well, let's make it personal. Me, Kuna, for God's daughter. I'm I'm strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Say, I'm strong in grace. Don't allow anything else in your mouth. Don't let's not allow anything else to come out of our mouths. 
Let's keep saying, I'm strong in the grace of God. I'm strong in the grace of God. And that grace of God covers every area of our lives. And the grace of God doesn't require us to do anything except believe God. The grace of God just needs us to surrender. The grace of God just needs us to be willing. The grace of God just needs us to take it by faith and say, it's mine. I have this supernatural ability to be whoever God needs me to be in any given situation. And with my God, nothing is impossible. Come on and give God praise for that today. Amen. I'm strong in the grace of God. This quote I got from Brother Copeland, he said, if your mouth fills your heart with the word of faith, and I I added the word grace. Let's read this together. If your mouth fills your heart with the word of God, uh, the word of faith, the word of grace, when you don't need it, your heart will fill your mouth when you do need it. Say that again. If your mouth fills your heart with the word of faith, the word of grace, when you don't need it, your heart will fill your mouth when you do need it. See, because faith is believing in your heart and speaking out of your mouth. But what you speak, what you speak, what you're speaking is building up faith. So speak what God says, because then strong faith in the grace of God will be developing in your life. So you say, by his stripes I was healed, even when we're going through some difficult times physically. Or we're praying on behalf of others. Thank you, Lord God, that you sent your word to heal them and to deliver them from all destruction. Your word is true. And that grace is going there to minister to that individual. And where they're feeling like they want to give up and they want to let go. You're declaring the grace of God over their lives as you're speaking God's word of truth over them. And you're believing in your heart and you're declaring that out of your mouth. And as you continue to declare, thank you, Lord God, I'm a tither and I'm a generous giver. I thank you, Lord God. God, for supernatural provision, supernatural protection, supernatural blessings. Father God, even though it may not look like it right now, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I don't go by what people are saying. I go by what your word of truth says, and I'm established by it. And your grace, your wonderful grace, is bringing about the supernatural into the natural situation. And so I lean into the grace of God by faith. And we keep building our lives on what God says when we don't even think we need it. So that when we need it, because we're speaking it by faith, it's getting an established in our heart. And then our heart is being strengthened in the grace of God. So then it declares in those weak times when it seems like, oh God, not again. The grace of God that undergirds us, that we've been leaning into by faith, that of God is the work of the Holy Ghost. The grace of God is the word of truth, the word of God. Oh, I love the grace of God. The grace of God saves me from myself. <laughs> the grace, saving grace for our marriages, saving grace for our children, saving grace over our physical well-being, over our mental and emotional well-being, saving grace. We access it by faith. Amen? Number one, we said grace cannot be earned. We said, number two, grace has only one channel that flows through, and that's through Jesus. And number three, we said, we access grace by faith. Amen? You know, I've been so encouraged that we have been giving our attention to this precious grace. Because it's been giving us the direction that God wants us to have. I love what it says in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10, because grace is at work for us, in us, and through us, even today. Paul says, but by grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet I, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. We are, we are by grace. 
And it was the grace of God that did the work. I said it was the grace of God that did the work. I said it was the grace of God that did the work. Don't be afraid of working hard for the advancement of God's kingdom. When we tap into that grace by faith, whoo, it's supernatural. Yeah, it might, you know, I'll tell you what. It might take more time because God needs us to give ourselves to something. There might be a little bit more effort, but the end result is supernatural. The end result is salvation. The end result is breakthrough. The the end result is miracles. There are miracles on the other side of our obedience. Grace doesn't just sit back and say, I don't want to because God doesn't make me. God will never make us. He needs our willingness. The ministry is still spelled W-O-R-K. It's still W-O-R-K. And when we give our lives to Jesus, it's never to be about us, but it's to be about him. And when it's about him, it's always about us. He cares about us. His eyes are on us, the church. His heart is in us, the church. He's trying to get our attention to help us to go and flow and do what we do by his grace so that we're not getting all caught up in the natural things and taking back what never was ours to take. He says, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. Pray and and declare what I say over that situation. Doubt not in your heart, but believe that those things that you say will come to pass. You'll have whatever you say. Don't get worried because you're just taking, you're nullifying the grace of God. You're, You're disregarding the grace of God. Then now you're trying to get into works about it. Even though we're having to give effort to be who God needs us to be. It's an effort to love the unlovely. It's an effort to not give on, give up on people because of the grace of God. He's not given up on us. It's, it's all effort, but, but don't let your labor of love be in vain. Lend yourself, lean into the grace of God. Cause in the middle of all the activity that's necessary for the purposes of God, it's not vain. It's not vainglorious. It's not about us. It's about him. And then if, if, if just one comes into the kingdom of God because of our act of obedience, because of our yielded life of grace by faith, then praise God, it makes it worth it all. Amen? It makes it all worth it. In Jesus' name. All right. Whoo, hallelujah. Time is on my side. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 12, 9, God's grace gives us strength. God was saying to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. I, I'm not an expert on the grace of God. I just know that I lean into it when I have not even understood how it was working for me just through my surrender. But I tell you, every time I've had my breakthroughs, it's been because of my surrendered heart. And in that surrender to do what God said to do from his word as my final authority, grace was working on my behalf when I didn't even know it. But the Bible says, be strong in this grace. And the Bible says his grace, this grace that he gives us is sufficient for us. And his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So God's grace gives us strength. God's grace gives me all sufficiency and an abundance for every good work. God's grace helps me to do what's good to do, what's right to do, and people get blessed. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Life group leaders... Be those life group leaders by, by grace. There's a great over you. Men and women of the most high God, leaders, mothers, dads, on the job, you might have positions of responsibility and given different levels of authority. Lean into the grace of God by faith. Receive it. Say, I have it. Walk in it. And keep the word of God before you as your final authority. Don't let the circumstances get the best of you. Let the word of God have the last say. And when you let the word of God have the last say, grace has the last say grace is sufficiency grace is supernatural ability will have the last say last Sunday was a significant Sunday that we had and and it was so tremendous that as I was taking Pastor Art to the airport after service last Sunday I said honey with tears in my eyes I said I said this was such a powerful service 
It was so full of grace. You were building God's magnificent church. Individual lives were being built up because you spoke grace with such graciousness. There was such a love and compassion that came out of you, Arthur. Thank you for your transparency that you were so open to allow yourself to just be who God needed you to be. I, you know, I was just... I was just so blessed. And I felt like that service that night was just a marked service for our church. Something shifted in the realm of the spirit. And there was a deposit into our lives at that service. I want to encourage you. If you were not able to be here last Sunday night, I would definitely get online and or go ahead and get the DVD from the, from the bookstore because you need to just come under this beautiful spirit of grace that was just imparted and dispensed into our lives. We have to live by this purity of grace. And I want you to go, my last scripture before I take us through this next uh, very important assignment that the spirit of God gave me. Go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. In the message Bible, it says, I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me. Paul is speaking and he says, especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. I feel like that's what was happening on Sunday night. Living then as every one of you does in pure grace. It's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. It gets us out of vain glory. James 4, 6 says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the, hum- to the humble. In 1 Peter, it says it like this. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with, be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Stay humble. You see, because this pure grace, it says, God, I can't do anything without you. It doesn't ever say, you can't do anything without me. It gives all the glory to God. Matthew 5, 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Purity of grace is a purity of heart. Purity of heart is saying, God, I surrender. God, I need you. You be at the forefront. And we don't take on the weights that we don't. We were never to take on. We don't take on the care. We don't take on the worry. And it's never our own ability. All we do is give of ourselves and what we can do. We come to church. He can't come to church for us. He can't, he can't pray for us. He gives us instruction of what to do from his word. And then we willingly make that decision to do what he says. And in our obedience to his word, grace is flowing. But in that... It's not all about, look what I did. Look at how long I pray. Look at how many scriptures I've memorized. Listen to how I can declare the word of God. Look at all, all you know, I'm all that and a bit. No, 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 no. Then we just, we just nullified. We just frustrated. We just set aside the grace of God. But in our humility, pure grace is working. Pure grace is working in our humility. God, I can't do it without you. And every... Every father here, every husband here, you have God's grace. Give yourself to it. You have that one spouse. Don't take anybody for granted. You have your children. You have your grandchildren. Wherever your lives may be, don't take anything or anyone for granted. And give yourselves to this grace. He gives us what's needed to be given to us so that he is glorified through what he does through us. Isn't God good? So this past Sunday night, Pastor Art led us into a particular prayer of consecration, a prayer of surrender to give ourselves to this grace. And so I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet and the, the TV team are going to assist me. And I felt it would be really powerful that Pastor Art would lead us in this prayer. So when you stand to your feet, It's going to come up on the screen, and um, go ahead, TV team. And as you're standing up to your feet, put your right hand on your heart. Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. I know you sent your son. I know you sent your son. To 
die for me on the cross of Calvary. To die for me on the cross of Calvary. That I might live. That I might live. By your design. By your design. I am a design of grace. I'm a design of grace. I put my faith. I put my faith. In your grace. In your grace. Upon my life. Upon my life. And I say thank you. And I say thank for you. For loving me. For loving with me. With your unconditional love. With your unconditional love. And giving me and giving me a life of grace a life of grace i say tonight i say tonight if ever i have if ever i have set aside your grace set aside your grace focused on my works and focused on my works or my deeds or my needs my performance my performance i repent i repent i change my heart change my heart i ask you i ask you to consecrate this house consecrate this house tonight today right now right now in this place in this place from this day forward from this day forward i will not live i will not live inferior inferior in shame in shame in guilt in guilt condemnation condemnation or fear or fear for i believe for i believe that by faith that by faith right now right now i step into i step into a new level a new level a much more level a much more level of the abundance of your grace of the abundance of your grace and i receive and i receive the gift of righteousness the, the to receive, work the gift in of me to work in me powerfully powerfully and i choose and i choose to reign to reign in Christ Jesus in Christ Jesus to believe your word to believe your word of how i feel past labels thoughts thoughts imaginations imagination this day forward from this day forward i break the power i break the power of every label of every label in the name of jesus in the name of jesus all competition all competition all comparison all comparison is broken off my life is broken off my life not this house not this house this house this house is designed by grace is designed by grace i have all i need i have all i need i don't have to live i don't have to live i choose not to live i choose not therefore i come against therefore i come again the spirit of envy the spirit of envy jealousy jealousy in jesus name in jesus name i live free i live free by the grace of god by the grace of god and today and today i allow i allow your grace your grace to work its purpose to work its purpose in my life in my life i will not set it aside i will not set it aside i choose i choose to be to be as paul was as paul was designed by grace designed by grace living by grace living by grace so before you so before you i say i say by the grace of god by the grace of god i am what i am i am what i am and your grace and your grace has not been given to me in vain has not been given to me in vain but now i labor but now i labor i lean on i lean on the grace you have given me the grace you have given me i will me. live a life of grace i will live a life of grace i will be gracious to others i will be gracious to others i will live in pure grace i will live in pure grace and i just want to thank you and i just want for to your thank unmerited you. favor for your unmerited that favor that came through your unconditional love that came through your unconditional love that now changes my life now changes my life and i want to thank you and i want to thank you i want to praise you i want to praise you that sing covered sing thank you covered. lord god thank lift you lord your god. hands up and sing this we worship you lord god we thank you for your goodness and your mercy We thank you for your grace. In Jesus name. Grace, glory is grace. Grace, glory is grace. At the cross you called it finished. Grace, wonderful grace. Grace, wonderful grace. At the cross Thank you for joining us today. I'm, I'm sure you've been blessed. I'd like to share with you just some information of how you can contact Word of Life Christian Center. Again, our pastors are Pastor Art and Kuna Sapovera. Our church is in Honolulu, Hawaii. Our mailing address is 550 Queen Street, Honolulu, Hawaii, 96813. If you still use mail, you can go, go ahead and mail us, but you can also contact us via email. If you have any questions, if you have anything you want to share with us, you can email us at 
W-O-L-C-C at W-O-L-Hawaii.com. Again, that's W-O-L-C-C, which stands for Word of Life Christian Center, W-O-L-C-C at wordoflifehawaii.com. Please email us if you have any questions or if you want to share any testimonies of what God is doing in your life. And we can also we also have a church in Yokohama. If you're ever in Word of Life, Yokohama, our pastor there is Pastor Fukiko Matsuzawa. And her phone number, well, let me give you her email. Um, W-O-L dot Japan at F-L-U-T-E dot O-C-N dot N-E dot J-P. You can, e- you can also email Word of Life Yokohama if you're ever going to be in the Tokyo, Yokohama area. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to being with you again next Saturday at 9 a.m. Until then, aloha. Aloha.